Hey Mia, we're gonna be looking at your unit activity. Um, so our first question says to write an expression for the number of tiles Bruce used and an expression for the number of tiles Felicia used. X is gonna be representing the number of tiles in a box. And so it's something we don't know. So if we go back, um, it says Bruce bought three boxes with the same number of tiles in each, but we don't know how many were in each. So that's gonna be X. So he bought three boxes. He bought three extra boxes, but he only used two tiles from the last one. And so if we go back here, um, we're going to say, so he bought three boxes of tile. Each one had X amount of tiles in each. And then he went back and got um, three more boxes. So he got three more boxes, but he only used two tiles in the last one. So he really used two full tile uh, boxes. He used two full boxes plus two extra tiles. And so he started with three, and then he used two more boxes, and then he bought two more separate tiles here. And so that's what we're gonna have for that first equation, which we can, right, if we add the three X and the two X, we get five X plus two. And then let's look back at Felicia's. Felicia bought five boxes with the same number that she, that were in Bruce's, so we can use X again. She ran out, she had to go back to the store and get five extra tiles to finish the job. So she bought five boxes and then five tiles. And so hers, hers would be, um, you're close here, five boxes plus five tiles, so that's it. So Bruce was five boxes plus two tiles, and Felicia's was five boxes and five tiles. Now if we keep going, um, to determine whether they use the same number of tiles, set the two equations equal to each other and solve for x. Is there a solution? Why or why not? If there's a solution, what is it? So now that we're using our correct equations, we should get, so remember we got five x plus two, it says to set it equal to the other one, 5x plus 5. Now if we solve these, we want to subtract 5x from both sides to start. We get nothing here but 2, and then we get nothing here but 5. Now whenever you're left with a number equals another number, and there's no more variables left, if there's no variables and we have a number equals a number, if these are two different numbers, there's no solution. What conclusion can you draw from this? The conclusion we can draw if their equations don't equal each other is that they either didn't use the same amount of tiles, right? If the two equations aren't equal to each other, that means they didn't use the same amount. Now it says, how can you change the equation from part B so it has infinitely many solutions? What would infinitely many solutions mean in terms of the situation? So infinitely many solutions, one way that we can get that, so if an equation has infinitely many solutions, um, once we reduce it, what we're going to get is something like um, 6 equals 6, or 8 equals 8, something like that, where it's a number equals itself. This would be an example of infinitely many solutions. And so if we had 5x plus 2, and then we had 5x plus 5, um, to make these have the same, have infinitely many solutions, what we could do is just change one of these, change the two to be a five like this one, or change this five to be a two. Because what will happen, say we have five x plus five equals five x plus five. If we subtract the five x's on both sides, um, we end up getting five equals five, which looks something like one of these, which is infinitely many solutions. And so how we can change it is by changing one of, um, these constant, a constant is just a number by itself without x. If we change one constant to be exactly the same as the other one, then we'll have infinitely many solutions, and infinitely many solutions in this case means that they use the exact amount of tiles, the same amount as each other. Um, all right, if the equations were uh, 6x plus 2 equals 5x plus 17, would there be one unique solution? What is it? What would that mean in terms of the situation? So let's go ahead and break this down. 6x plus 2 equals 5x plus 17. Let's go ahead and subtract 5x from both sides here. 
So we get x plus 2 equals, that goes away, 17. Then to get x by itself, we want to subtract 2 from both sides, so we get x equals 15. Now, what would that mean in terms of this situation? Remember that x represented the number of tiles in each box. And so this would mean that there were 15 tiles per box. All right, and we'll just do this last task. Okay, um, the tiles that Bruce used were one quarter of a square foot in area. The table here is now different. It shows the area covered by Felicia's tile in terms of the number of tiles used. So now it says write an equation representing the area Bruce covered y. So y is the area in terms of the number of tiles he used, which is x. So if it told us here that Bruce's tiles were one quarter of a square foot, then the area is equal to a quarter of a square foot times each tile here. Now it says um, to find the equation represented by Felicia in terms of the tiles. And so if we look here, the area that she covered, so it's going to be y, and these are going to be x's. So the area that she covered is um, 1 in this case, and that's equal to um, the number of tiles, which is 9, times x, the number of tiles that she used. And so if we um, get x by itself, we need to divide both sides by 9. And so each tile is 1 ninth of a square foot. Oops, sorry. So y, the area, is equal to 1 ninth times x here, and it would work for all of these. So hers is 1 ninth. Now down here, okay, the person whose equation has the greater unit rate is the person whose tile covers the most area per tile. Um, which, whose equation has the greater unit rate? Bruce's, because 1 quarter is bigger than 1 ninth. All right, so now we're going to be using this program. It says um, to put in the slope for both of the equations. So we need to enter the slope in the y-intercept. Let's actually go back. Okay. So one fourth, and then we're going to do another one. Oops, we need to do one more. So we make another one. Let's see, then enter the slope and intercept Felicia's one. So I'll save that line, and then for Felicia's. Save that line. Okay. Now, um, paste a screenshot so you'll paste that there. Which line is steeper? So if we look here, the one ninth is this gray one here, and I'm sorry, one ninth is the dark one here, and one fourth is the gray one. So we see the steeper one is the one on top, so that would be the one fourth, which is Bruce's. Um, what is what does the greater unit rate or slope mean in terms of this situation? Um, so the fact that the slope is steeper means that he's covering more area, right? As they use tiles, his is going to cover more area because it's going up quicker. And there we have it.